Welcome to the Fox Valley Technical College's Virtual Open House. My name is Aaron Knapp and I'm an Academic and Resource Advisor. I work primarily at the Oshkosh Riverside campus, but I also help out with online programs. I've been here at Fox Valley Technical College for about five years and uh, it's an extremely awesome place. So welcome to the Virtual Open House and we're happy that we could have you here today. Uh, what we'll be looking at today is our uh, presentation of how to be a successful student. Quite a few uh, different pieces of information to uh, look at here. So we'll jump right into it. Uh, one thing we want you to think about as you are thinking about uh, Fox Valley Technical College is the flexible learning options that we have available at the institution. So some of those include in-person uh, classes, online, hybrid, as well as virtual classes. But we also have to make note for accelerated classes too, which are sometimes grouped within some of these other modalities. So breaking down what these learning formats really look like, uh, in-person uh, classes are more on campus, are typically on campus uh, either at one of our two campuses, Appleton or Oshkosh, or one of our regional centers, which also includes labs as well. Online is more asynchronistic, and what that means is that there's no formal meetings, but all the content is housed directly online in a virtual environment and they're typically uh, very flexible for students. They're flexible for students who are uh, often working adults. They have an opportunity to really access the content and work on that at any point. So even if you work uh, second shift and you decide that you wanna start working on your classes at midnight, you have the opportunity to do that because those online classes are very flexible. All the online content is gonna be available via Blackboard. Blackboard is Fox Valley Technical College's learning management system. So many classes, even if they're not online, will also utilize Blackboard. Uh, again, it's kind of a parking lot where a lot of your uh, course content, assignments, assessments, and things like that would be. Hybrid classes, on the other hand, are both in-person and online, so a little bit different. Uh, classes may meet in person on campus at a campus or regional center uh, some weeks versus other weeks where it is strictly online. So kind of a blending between both the in-person and online formats that we looked at. Uh, virtual classrooms, on the other hand, are held in what we call collaborate sessions. So you don't have to worry about what that necessarily is just yet, uh, but they are basically in person anywhere. So you can come on campus and you can uh, access your virtual classrooms uh, while you are on campus or at a regional center, but you can also do it um, from your living room if you wanted to, which is very flexible. So those classes, on the other hand, are synchronistic in nature, meaning that there are formal meeting days and times. So you definitely want to take that into consideration. Still has some of the flexibility of online classes, um, but is a little more structured in the sense that you actually have formal meeting days and times which uh, are also accessible via Blackboard. So you would access a virtual classroom via Blackboard. And again, you can do that on campus, uh, electronically, uh, digitally, virtually, or you can also do that from the comfort of your own home. So via Blackboard, uh, students engage with classes, uh, typically communicating with instructors in a variety of different ways. Um, it could be via video, audio, or also there is a chat functionality via the Blackboard virtual classrooms as well. Now, what I was talking about before is also accelerated classes. Accelerated classes are sometimes grouped in a variety of different uh, modalities or formats. So what I mean by that is that we were talking about in-person, we were talking about online, and we were talking about virtual classrooms. All of those could be accelerated. And what that means is that instead of having classes within perhaps a standard 16-week uh, format, it may be condensed down to eight weeks or perhaps even four weeks. So it really just kind of depends on the structure. But again, those classes are accelerated in nature. As they accelerate, there's a little bit more work that needs to be completed within that time frame. But nevertheless, they are kind of grouped with other modalities. Um, Moving to the next format that we're looking at here, in terms of being a successful student, you also want to take into consideration your support team. So your support team can look a little bit different from student to student, uh, but some of the big uh, forces that we see in terms of your success uh, in your support team would include academic advisors, could include counselors, could include faculty advisors, friends and family, as well as peer leaders. To give you a little bit more insight of what each one of those folks does, I wanna give you some information about that. So with academic advisors, academic advisors would generally help out with general advising, 
course planning, as well as study skills and time management. If you're starting to fall behind, an academic advisor like myself would reach out to you, would connect, make a perhaps uh, plan to ensure that you are successful throughout the entirety of your college. So all the way from the beginning, uh, right when you register for classes, all the way through graduation. Counselors, on the other hand, would help more on the personal counseling side. So if we're thinking uh, substance abuse or AODA um, kind of situations, as well as crisis situations, that's where counselors would come in. Um, and they also help out with career counseling. So if you're ever curious, how can I be successful uh, at Fox Valley Technical College? One of the biggest things is making sure that you are in the right program and making sure that you're in the right program. A lot of times students will go through career counseling because career counseling can make sure that your desires, your goals, your interests are syncing up directly uh, with the uh, programs that we have here at Fox Valley Technical College. Now, faculty advisors are also going to be your instructors within the program. Um, they do some general advising, kind of like academic advisors, but they're really the career experts. And what I mean by that is that they have traditionally worked in the field and are now here at Fox Valley Technical College as instructors. So if you had a question uh, as it pertains to the field, for example, that is really where those faculty advisors come in and can talk about internships and things like that that are very beneficial. Peer leaders, on the other hand, are folks, uh, they are actually student workers that are at Fox Valley Technical College. Uh, they provide a peer-to-peer -peer connection to you as a student. Um, they can also provide general assistance with various FETC resources. So we were talking before about Blackboard. We'll also talk about things like My FETC, what that is, as well as accessing your student email. Uh, all those kind of things, a peer leader can assist with you. Um, it can be a situation where they can help you in person when uh, we're kind of in that environment, uh, but they can also help you virtually as well. So something else to think about. Uh, friends and family members are also a critical aspect of your support team. So uh, making sure that they are aware of your goals and interests, that you're going to school, um, using them as a uh, resource and as a support, they can uh, sometimes give you some confidence and they can also talk through uh, their experiences perhaps if they've had those. Um, so many times friends and family can also act as part of your support team. So a big question that I get as an advisor is how many credits should I take? Uh, this is one of the biggest aspects of success here is making sure that you can take credits and you can fit it into your already existing schedule. Now there's a lot of things to think about with time management. So if you're looking at a traditional week, you have about 168, well not, not about, you have, you have only 168 hours that you can really uh, utilize for your own efforts. So a lot of things to think about. Now, what I would encourage you to do is discuss your academic credit load with your advisor and make sure that you understand all the ins and outs. Because again, uh, it is a big thing to take on and it's important to understand exactly how that's gonna factor in to your already existing schedule. So by a general rule of thumb, uh, there's a lot of information that we can give you for time management, but you know, since we have a pretty short presentation here, time management, generally speaking, for every hour that you have of class, you're looking at about two hours of study time. So traditionally, if you're in a three credit uh, class, three credit class means that you would be in uh, three hours of class time every single week, which would mean that you would also have uh, six hours of study time outside for a total of nine hours. So again, falls within that um, hour of class time as well as two hours of study time. If we were looking at uh, 12 credits in, that you would be in for a term, so for a semester you'd be let at 12 credits, that would equal 12 hours of school and then an additional 24 hours of study time. And what that would equal is 36 hours, which is almost the equivalent of a full-time job. So you have to think about, can you just dump in 36 hours to your current schedule. If you can, that's great. If you can't, however, and you're a little bit concerned, that's where you should definitely reach out to someone like myself or one of the other advisors here at Fox Valley Technical College, and we can ensure that we create a time management plan that does work for you. Now, we were looking before at um, the task management, time management, kind of what that factors in. If you're looking at 168 hours that you have uh, for a, a standard week, a standard student might have something similar to what you can see on the screen. So sleeping about 56 hours a week breaks down to roughly eight hours a night. It's great for memory recall, memory retention, so making sure that you are properly resting. Uh, if we were saying that you're in 12 credits, 
Uh, you would be looking at 12 hours, again, of class time per week, plus factoring in the study time for 12 hours, so that one to two ratio, looking at 24 hours. Uh, depending on what your uh, circumstance looks like, you might also have travel time, not just to school, uh, but also to work, other places as well. Uh, so travel time might be something like six hours. If you're working part-time, you may be working 20 hours. You may also factor in family time, things of that sort. That would put you at about 15 hours. Uh, meals, housework might put you roughly at 10 hours, something like that. Exercise or socialization could be five hours. Um, generally relaxing, which is good. You don't want to burn the candle at both ends. Uh, you know, roughly 10 hours, give or take. Personal hygiene, um, eating, things like that, they kind of factor in, so three and four hours respectively for that. And then if you have any other, other tasks, appointments, or things like that, maybe three hours. So it sounds like a lot, right? Uh, but really, this, this is only so much time that you have. Again, you only have 168 hours, and if you were suddenly saying, okay, well, I'm working 40 hours a week, that suddenly modifies quite extensively what your time management plan looks like. So again, it can be a little bit difficult to figure that out on your own. Uh, if you are looking at being successful, it's always good to chat with an advisor to further get some information on what that's gonna look like specifically for you. So technology, accessing technology, utilizing technology is an important aspect of being a successful student at Fox Valley Technical College. And we were kind of talking about this before, but three big areas that we typically see is again Blackboard, which is our learning management system where a lot of your course content, uh, syllabi, assignments, assessments, and things like that will be housed. That's an important aspect to understand. Um, it will be, I'll make a, a shameless plug for this, it's going to be the uh, same login as your MyFETC or really anything uh, at the institution. It's always going to be your uh, student ID as well as the general password that you have set up. Um, also, we have something called a MyFETC account, which is an account that can provide information as it pertains to financial aid, um, grades, finances, and things of that sort. So that's definitely an important aspect of technology as well. And then we also have FETC email, which is required. So I want to make an important point of this. Uh, checking your FETC email on a consistent basis is definitely going to be critical. So make sure as you're transitioning from um, you know, maybe an applicant status all the way jumping into registration, getting signed up for classes, that you are setting up your FETC email account, making sure that you are actively checking those kind of things. Now, with Blackboard, uh, we have a couple different resources that can help you out. We have something called uh, Blackboard Support for Students, uh, or Blackboard Basics for Students. Um, that is something that is accessible via the Blackboard site. So if you can see on the screen here, this is kind of what Blackboard looks like. Um, you're going to be able to see a student login as well as a guest login, uh, but you're also going to be able to have information about how to get ready uh, for Blackboard. So definitely be sure that if you don't feel comfortable with Blackboard, if you've never used it before, um, to access some of the content that we have available via the Blackboard sites and or also letting us know as advisors uh, so we can help you out in terms of learning a little bit more about that. As I was talking about before, we have peer leaders which are a great resource and many times they can work with you virtually to show you step by step exactly how Blackboard works. Blackboard also has a smartphone app, so you're going to be able to access it via the Apple Store as well as Google Play. That is something that we strongly encourage you to download because, again, having that access to Blackboard at all times, you know, many people, of course, have their smartphones with them at uh, all times typically. Having that access is going to be beneficial so you can constantly stay abreast of any new content from your instructors as well as any important messages that they might send through Blackboard. As I was talking about before, uh, my FETC is going to be important. So quite a few different pieces that you're going to be able to see on there. Uh, we'll kind of look at these real quick. You're going to have your profile, tasks, financial accounts. So again, finances. You're also going to have information pertaining to financial aid, managing your classes, signing up for your classes, as well as your academic re uh, records. So things like your transcript, for example. Um, you're also going to be able to access your academic progress, so your advisor reports. 
Um, there's a tab for admissions, so if you're looking at admissions or any of the current items that you have to submit, that will be listed out there, as well as my FETC resources. So a great place to uh, have uh, some of this information. Like I said, um, as you're going through uh, your classes and whatnot, your grades will be posted formally to your my FETC account, so you'll have that information, but also you'll be able to track financial aid and things of that sort. FETC student email, as I mentioned before, I'll make another plug because consistency is important. It is the official source of any college announcements and college business such as financial aid. So if you're working with financial aid, for example, and you use some random email, they may say, well, we don't know who this is. Uh, and they may not respond to you or they may say, hey, we can't give you enough information or we can't have this kind of conversation. Uh, so using your official FETC email will give you the opportunity to have that connection to all the different resources that we have here. We'll be able to verify, hey, that this is the student who is using the email account. And again, if there is any important information that we have that comes through, any college announcements, things like that, they will all formally go to your FETC student email account. Next up is the Master Advising Plan. Uh, we call that a MAP. And that is something I strongly encourage every student to complete because it's definitely important to help you understand all the way, your program all the way from start through finish. So your graduation date, your expected time of graduation can be generated on something like this master advising plan. So it's important to know who your support system is. Of course, we looked at some of this general information during this presentation, but it's also important to actually write these things out so you are aware what your support system is going to look like. It's, a, it's important to know how your program is laid out. And again, by knowing what your program is going to look like in terms of it being laid out, you're going to be able to know your expected time of graduation. If you want to expedite that a little bit more, we can make modifications. Or if you'd like to um, uh, kind of have it uh, spread out a little bit more too, uh, we have the opportunity to do that as well. Uh, understanding your potential barriers to success and coming up with solutions, that's a critical aspect of the master advising plan. We can actually talk through and have a direct connection and see, hey, is this barrier going to get in the way of your success? And if so, what can we do as an institution to help you out? Also, making the best decisions based on your goals. Uh, your goals, of course, are going to be important as you're continuing on in your program. Uh, by so, so by putting the goals in the master advising plan, we will be able to look at that information and help you along the way. And also, it is definitely important to know how your advisor can help you out. So by completing this master advising plan, uh, you will know who your advisor is, you'll have a stronger connection, and you'll have a better sense of your program as well as your goals moving forward. The next thing I want to look at here is a couple different resources that we have through Fox Valley Technical College that can help you out as you're jumping into classes. And two of those would be Fox Valley Technical College's Teaching and Learning Center, as well, as well as something that we call the right way. So there are peer tutors and instructors that can help with a variety of different things um, and ensure that tutoring can be beneficial to you. Uh, so they can help all with things like math, writing, and science, but there's also study groups that we get set up. And then in terms of the right way, um, if you're looking at completing papers, uh, not just for writing classes like English composition, but perhaps other classes as well, uh, they can help in terms of outlining research papers, um, just generally proofreading assignments, which is extremely beneficial prior to submission, as well as APA format or any other formats that would be utilized within your classes as well. So both great resources that can help you be a successful student as you're transitioning to Fox Valley Technical College. There's another uh, presentation that will be taking place uh, regarding financial aid and scholarships, but I did want to give you some basic information. Uh, part of being a successful student is knowing exactly what your financial picture looks like. So applying for financial aid is a pretty easy thing to do. All you have to do is go to fafsa.gov, but nevertheless, it can impact your success. So making sure your finances are in place uh, as soon as possible is going to be beneficial for your success. Um, in terms of loan eligibility, you need to be in at least six credits, but again, we can work with you as advisors to ensure that you are in the proper set of classes and to ensure that you are getting financial aid eligibility. Also, FETC scholarships, uh, you can apply for those online at two different parts of the academic year. Um, one would be late January for fall, 
and one would be September for the spring semester. So there's actually only one application that you need to complete, which is really beneficial. You don't have to complete all these other applications. You just have one, uh, and it's actually applicable for over 300 scholarships. So definitely think about um, those next steps, your financial picture, and making sure that that looks um, succinct to you. We also have something called an online student checklist, but this is not just for online students. It's great because it can prov uh, provide information about how to be prepared prior to the start of the term in terms of just generally getting things organized, as well as technology and making sure that those are all set for you, as well as when you're in the semester as well. So it provides the great preparation and success information before, during, and throughout all of your courses. And you can use this every single semester that you are in school. That will be available via fetc.edu backslash online dash learning dash resources. So you're gonna see that on the screen here. Definitely go out to that website, access that information because it is going to be beneficial and help you be a bit more successful. So the last thing I'll say to you here today is do something today that your future self will thank you for. Uh, welcome to, again, Fox Valley Technical College's virtual open house. We're happy that you were able to jump into this session today. Again, if you have any questions, we're going to be segueing into a Q&A session here in a little bit, and I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you might have.